Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to create a YouTube header. All right, so if you have a YouTube channel, one of the strongest branding elements you can have is a customized YouTube header. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So the first thing that you want to do though is we want to find some kind of a template. And you can actually get that directly from YouTube or just download it in the link underneath. But I'll show you how to do it. Inside of YouTube, what you want to do is you want to go to your channel. And uh, you'll notice right now I've got the old layout. If you have the new layout, it's fine. It's pretty much the same thing. We're going to choose the Creator Studio. Then once we go into the studio, we're going to see over down the bottom here, we're going to have help and feedback. It's very similar on the new one. We're just going to click here. And under help and feedback, we're going to type in header. And then it's going to give you some information here. Let's hit enter. And it's going to go how to edit our header. Let's go to computer. And then under here, it gives us the art settings. And we're just going to scroll down here all the way down until we see image tips and guidelines. And under there, we're going to choose download our channel art templates. Click on that and we can download that template. All right, once we've downloaded our template, you're gonna see two files in there. One's a PSD for Photoshop, and the other one's a PNG, and it actually says Fireworks, which is kind of funny, because Fireworks isn't really sort of around anymore. But anyway, let's double click the one that says Photoshop, double click that, and it's gonna open into Photoshop. If you look at it here, there's two parts here. There's our art and our spec, so we can actually hide that, and this is gonna be the area we've got to work with. If we turn this on, we can see, you know, we've got all the text and the information. So essentially, this is how it works. This whole area here at 2560 by 1440 is what you would see on TV. You know, if you're using an Apple TV or a Fire Stick, those kind of things. But what really matters here is the text and logo stuff area. This strip here is what we care about. And it's 423 high. And if we look at it, the width here, it's 1546. This is the area will appear in every device. If we go to a tablet, it's going to be a little wider. It's going to go to 1855. And of course, to a desktop, that's when we've expanded it on a big desktop. We're going to see it at 2560. It's going to be the maximum. So what we want to do is put our real key, key stuff right in this area here. And we just want to fill up the rest of it so it looks good. So it's a little bit of strategy here. Don't design for this big area. Design for the middle bit and think about filling that a big area so it's not going to look bad. We'll use a solid color or a pattern. And what I want to do is I'm going to hit Control R for rulers and I'm just going to click and drag down to this area here. Because what I really want to do is I want to make sure that all my design, everything that matters is in here. I can have things outside bleeding out. That's fine just as long as the important part is here because this is what people are going to see most of the time. So I'm also going to pull this in so we know all key stuff like text needs to be inside this area. So it'll be on every device. It doesn't mean we can't have other things outside of here. So people see it on their phones and tablets. Um, but mostly, you know, desktop, and we're going to be looking at it there. And most of our phones, we're going to be seeing it exactly like that. So so the important thing is really is make sure that we design for that area, the safe area, but make sure it works everywhere else. Very, very key there. Design for that, but make sure it works. Okay, so let's move on. What we want to do is we want to create a design. And one of the things I love to do is grab images from Adobe Stock um, because I can find anything I want. I can grab the watermarked version. I can apply it to my design. I can play around for it. And I don't have to pay anything. It's free to play around and experiment with those watermarked versions. If you find something that you want to use, you can license that image. It then now becomes a unwatermarked version and it also ups the resolution to high resolution. So let's start with an image that I grabbed here. And of course, you would probably grab the image of yourself or whatever you want. And I'm just going to drag it in here. And we're going to use this girl here. This is going to be our YouTuber. Okay, so it obviously doesn't look anything like me. But you know what, she looks a lot better than me. So I'm going to use her as my channel art. So I'm thinking about here, let's have a look. This is looking pretty good. Now one of the things you have to consider, am I using the old version of Creator Studio or the new? If you're using the new version of Creator Studio, you have all of this to play around with. Um, because all your thumbnail and everything appears underneath the banner. 
if you're going to be using the old one, be aware that this area of the banner here is going to be used up. So in that case, you'd probably want to move it over and then your thumbnail will appear here. But I'm going to design for the newer version, so it doesn't matter. Just bear that in mind when you're doing the design. Okay, so I'm going to apply this. So one of the things we can do, notice I've got this in between. If you don't see it there, make sure you drag that layer so it's directly above your right here and underneath all the spec layer so we can turn that off and we can preview it. Now, if this background looks too dark when we're doing that, we can actually just right click on there and you can change it. So I could choose a lighter gray, a darker gray, you know, all the different things, medium gray, etc. So I can see it a little bit easier. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, great. So now one of the things I want to do, though, is I want to fill this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to rasterize this layer. So we choose rasterize layer. And what it does is it enables me to play around with the pixels. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take up that full width. So I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool. And then what I want to do is I just want to make a thin selection around here. If you use a space bar, you can move this around, but you want to get as close to the edge as you can, but make sure you're just within the edge and make a very thin selection. Nice. Now what I want to do is I want to copy that to a new layer. And I do that by hitting control J. And if you look at this, we've got this little slither here. We actually used to call this effect pixel stretch, and you'll see why in a second. It was kind of used a little bit, you know, like maybe 10 years ago for special effects. It hasn't been used so much lately. It was, um, yeah, you'll see how it works. Okay, so we're just going to hit control T right now. And that brings up free transform. And then we're just going to click on one side, drag it out, and then hit enter. And notice what it does is it creates this seamless edge because we just kind of took that very edge and dragged it out. Now, if it was, looks kind of weird, you can make a selection around it and blur it. That's another option. Okay, let's go to the other side. This time, we're going to click on there. And why don't I show you the single pixel one just for fun. Single column, marquee, and this one you just drag till you get right to the edge. You could zoom in if you really want it to be perfect. In this case, I'm going to take it to about there. You may not see it because it's a single pixel, but it's there. Make sure you select that layer and hit Control J to copy it to a new layer. Now we're gonna hit Control T for free transform, grab one side, drag it out, hit enter, and there we go. Now we've expanded that all the way across. Now, the TV is gonna see other things above and beneath. If you wanted, you could put in different patterns. You know, you could put a pattern background in there. You could put different colors. You can do whatever you want. Just remember, it doesn't, you don't want that to be the main part of your branding because the main part of your branding is gonna be in the middle. So you could do whatever you want. I'm just gonna fill it with yellow. So we're just gonna grab the top and the bottom. So why don't we take this? We're gonna merge it together. So I held down the shift key. I've selected all three layers and I'm just gonna hit control E for merge, E for merge. Okay, makes sense, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so we've got that layer there. What we wanna do now is um, apply, we wanna stretch that out. And by the way, I apologize for laughing at my own joke. That's not funny. Okay, so we're gonna go in here, we're gonna grab the very top, boom, looking good. Control J for copy, and then we'll just go straight to Control T. Control J copies it, Control T transforms it, drag it out, hit enter. And now we've got the top part looking good. And now we just want to do the bottom. Yeah, I, I guess you can ma imagine we can have an issue here and we'll address that in a second. So we've got that there, same keyboard shortcuts, hold down control, hit J, then hit T. I didn't even take my hand off the T, off the control, which is, uh, by the way, control on Windows, command on Mac. So you can actually hold that and you can do more than one function at a time. I don't know if you knew that. So I'm holding it down, hit control J, copies it, control T goes into free transform. All right, so now we're just gonna drag that down and we're gonna extend this and you'll see the real pixel stretch. That's a pixel stretch effect. You've probably seen that before. Yeah, no, um, but that's actually what that's called. So what we wanna do though, is we wanna fill this in um, unless you like that look, you know, you want a Pez dispenser, like, hey, you know, I've got a Pez channel. Um, that would work well. Otherwise, I'll show you how to fix that right now. So what we're going to do is make a selection around here. But why don't we just merge all of these together just for fun? So we selected the layers. Control E once again for merge E, silent E. Okay, so we're going to make a selection around this area here. We want to kind of fill it there. I'm just using the space bar to move it across. Let's go in nice and tight. Not too tight. Actually, let's go a little looser. There we go. 
And what I'm doing is just making sure I've got a nice solid color on either side. Now I want this to blend in a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the select modify because we want to modify that selection and feather because we want to make a soft edge. Think of feathers as being really soft and that's why they chose the word feather because, you know, feather is a soft, soft edge. If you can't remember, that's an easy way. Okay, now we're just going to click OK with 10 pixels. Let's grab our eyedropper tool. And I want to grab very, very close to that edge. In fact, just inside that edge, I'm going to click and notice how it set that foreground color. Now I want to set the background color. I don't have to flip it. I'm just going to hold the Alt or the Option key, go on the other side and tap. And notice the foreground background colors are now set. Grab the gradient. We're going to choose foreground to background in the gradient. See that? And make sure it's linear. Make sure it's not in reverse, although we just drag the other way if it is. Big thing, normal blend mode, opacity 100. And then we just start at the very edge there, and we're just going to drag across to the other edge. And this is where our gradient's going to go. Release it. Hit Control D to turn it off. And boom, voila, we've now filled it in. Now we've got a nice background element. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go in here and we're going to grab some text. So why don't we do that? Let's just give it a title and we're going to call it my awesome. Everything's awesome, by the way. No, not the song. I'm not going to sing it. Take my awesome YouTube channel. Okay, so we've got my awesome YouTube channel. Now, if we want to capitalize the T, we could. There we go. My awesome YouTube channel. And um, let me just drag that into position there. And I'm going to hit Control T and that's Command T for free transform and just kind of drag that out for the size. Not digging it completely. Let's do a little bit more uh, to make this more interesting. Let's grab a blue. Um, because blue works quite well against uh, yellow, in case you didn't know. And uh, there we go. See, that's going to look quite good. Let's choose a more interesting font. Click under here. By the way, one of the cool things about working with these fonts, as we roll over, we can see all the fonts here. Um, if it's a little hard to see it there, you can actually turn on by clicking there. We can actually grab our character, and we can also do it this way. So if you find that that works better for you, that's great. Um, so we're just kind of looking for something. What do we got here? Mm, I kind of like that one there. So I'm going to go for a pretty bold one. Now we need to resize it. So I'm just going to drag it up to there. And I'm going to hit Control T. That would be Command T for Mac. And I'm just going to Shift Drag to make the size of it. So there's one thing that's actually really going to help your YouTube channel. And that's to put your publishing schedule up on your banner. That really helps. Even if you want, you can actually say what your YouTube channel is about. So it could be, you know, Photoshop tutorials like, you know, my one it says Photoshop tutorials each week. Um, in this case, you know, maybe hers is a vlog. So she's going to put up her vlog episodes and they're going to be every Monday and every Friday. Now, if you put that regular schedule up there and keep to it, people will start to come back. And that regularity is one of the huge keys to growing your YouTube channel. All right, so let's grab our type tool. And what I want to do is I'm going to create a new part here. And let's do her schedule. I just click there with the type. And now I'm going to type in new episodes each Monday and Friday. Excellent. Now we obviously need to give this a little bit more, you know, something. So I'm going to select all of this and we're going to choose a different font. So we can scroll down here and let's find something a little bit more informal. I like this one here, Sign Painter. So I'm going to grab this one. Let's change the color for something that's going to work nice complementary to the yellow and also work with the blue. Let's go for kind of like a, a reddish crimson color will work quite well against those other ones. Click OK. Let's just click over there. Now we've applied it and we want to make it a little bigger. Control T, Command T for free transform. And let's drag that up and hit enter. And we can just kind of position that, you know, where we want. Make sure it aligns up with the side. You'll notice it will snap in there. 
So we're almost there, but one of the things we can do is let's clean up our kerning a little bit, which is the space in between the characters. So if we look at this Monday and Friday, there's a big gap there. But if I delete those and we go to Monday to Friday, see, that's just a little too much. So what we want to do is find a nice balance. So I'm going to put my cursor in between the N and the plus, and I'm going to hit the Alt key, and it would be Option on Mac, and then just tap the arrow key. That looks good. Now I'm going to use the arrow key to go across, Alt, Option, and now we can do a custom spacing in there. And let's just click the Move tool and see how much cleaner that looks. Okay, so let's preview this and see how this would look. So if I hit Control 1, we'll go full screen. So that's about the width of it. So I'm just going to hit the space bar here, and I'm just going to move this to the top, and let's hide this. And here's the thing, I, you know, it works. It's actually just resize the Photoshop interface. Hit the space bar and move it across. And so that's pretty much what it's gonna look like when we're on the YouTube banner on the website or if we're on the phone. Drop a comment underneath. What is your favorite color combination? I'd love to know. So let's recap. First of all, I showed you how to get a template that gives you the sizes to work with. And uh, you can go to YouTube, download them, or I'll give you a link underneath where you can grab those. Now, the other skills I've shown you is how to bring a photo in from Adobe Stock. I've shown you how to work with colors and how to work with type and how to resize the type. So that's a lot of different tools that you can use to enhance your learning and try some different things. So I'm really curious to see what you come up with with your own design. And to help you, I'm gonna give you 10 free images from Adobe Stock underneath. So you can grab the photos from Adobe Stock right inside of Photoshop. You can experiment with as many of them as you like. There's no limit. Um, you can grab the watermarked version and you can use as many as you like. And you don't have to pay for them unless you want to actually use them. And then if you do, use those uh, 10 free ones or sign up and get your own subscription where you can license the images that you want to use in your final work. And by the way, if you guys want to contribute work to Adobe Stock, I'm also providing a link underneath where you can become a contributor. Very, very easy. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. If you like this video, smash that like button into dust. Don't forget to drop your comment. Love to know your thoughts, what you'd like to learn next. And uh, if you're not a subscriber to Photoshop Cafe, you're not part of the Cafe crew, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button right now and you're going to get a new tutorial every single week. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.